Hey y'all, Scott here, and I'm freaking out here. I was outside, and I heard somebody say one of the numbers in my soch. Privacy is my number one concern, all right? I don't want anybody to know anything about me. For Christ's sakes, I blur out my inkjet numbers. You may ask why I'm so keen on privacy. Where did it all begin? Well, let me ask you this. How the hell did we learn about Geist DS? That game was canceled. We weren't supposed to know anything about it, but now we know everything about it. Really, anything can get revealed at this point. Here's my blood type. Damn it! Video games are a tricky bunch, and development of them can be wild. I mean, how many times have you seen a developer interview where they say, Yeah, it was pretty easy. Any video game that makes it to market is sort of a miracle. The amount of work and coordination that has to go into making even the worst games ever makes it unsurprising how many game projects never got completed. Whether it's due to the publisher, the development team, market conditions, a lack of resources, or any of these other fun words I found in the dictionary, Thousands of video games since the dawn of time have been cancelled before an official release and have never been publicly available. Some video game cancellations are absolutely shocking and disheartening, and others are Project Giant Robot for Wii U. How did Silent Hills not make it to store shelves, but Mega Flarp did? Well, let's delve into the world of cancelled video games to understand how this came out, but this didn't. Now we can't look at every single video game that's ever been cancelled, so this is more so a general roundup of a bunch of cancelled games throughout history. Who knows, maybe in the future we can talk about more cancel games as a whole or dive deeper into a specific cancellation. If you want to look more into games that have never seen the light of day, I highly recommend checking out Unseen64.net. This is where the majority of information on these cancel games lies nowadays, and you're sure to find something wild here. The eighth generation of game consoles had some of the most infamous cancellations of all time in my opinion, the most heartbreaking of which was Project Rap Rabbit. Please care. A failed Kickstarter campaign for a spiritual successor to Parappa the Rapper, with a goal of raising enough money to buy a nice cigar. After the Kickstarter failed at even getting close to not failing, they put development on an indefinite hold, which was a nice way to say it was cancelled, of course. Are you fucking stupid? Now, what overshadows Project Rap Rabbit's cancellation? Well, not much, but this will do. Star Wars 1313 was supposed to be a huge leap forward for Star Wars games. It was going to be much more mature and leverage the power of the 8th generation consoles. But then Disney decided to go forward with the mission statement of the entire company. Buy Lucasfilm, cancel 1313. They shut down LucasArts and subsequently canceled all of their projects at the time, with Star Wars 1313 being one of them. Silent Hills, however, is possibly the most notorious cancellation of this generation. Uh, the Silent Hill franchise was just sort of existing at the time. Uh, the survival horror genre was kind of struggling, but then a free game was put out entitled PT, short for Playable Teaser. At the end, it was revealed to be the announcement for a new Silent Hill game being produced by Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. Like, that would ever happen. Internal conflicts with the publisher Konami and Kojima led to him leaving the company and Silent Hills being wiped from existence. Even even with PT, Konami's trying their hardest to ensure nobody even thinks of that thing anymore by pulling it off of the PlayStation Store. After LA Noir, Team Bonnie decided to work on, well, I can't say that. It was going to reuse a lot of the technologies developed for LA Noir and feature comparable gameplay elements. However, this was set in 1930s Shanghai. Officially, only one screenshot was ever released, but full gameplay was leaked. Warner Brothers was originally going to publish it, but backed out later on. In the end, they really just couldn't secure a publisher and enough funding. Killer Freaks from Outer Space. This was one of the first Wii U titles revealed. Back when E3 associated itself with the year 2011, and Nintendo officially announced the Wii U alongside a bunch of killer games. Pretty much the only concrete game they announced was LEGO City. We got some third-party multi-platform ports promised, with many not coming true, the concept of Smash Brothers coming out for Wii U and 3DS and not much else, some tech demos, and that was pretty much it. But Ubisoft announced an exclusive title of their own, that being... <laughs> Killer Freaks was a first-person shooter focused on shooting aliens and not much else. This was cancelled and reworked into Zombie U one year later, how the f***? Project Giant Robot was a game created to make the Wii U gamepad seem worthwhile and that was it. Just a tech demo for the system that was all about making a giant robot and wreaking havoc as it. It was announced alongside Project Guard, which did end up releasing as Star Fox Guard. I would have assumed that this was just a tech demo, but Nintendo kept reaffirming that they were intending on releasing it for the Wii U as a full game. And I'm sure we all know how that turned out. Just think where the Wii U would be if this game released. It's speculated that the Nintendo Labo Robot Kit was what came of this game. I don't think that's been confirmed. Imagine being Microsoft and saying no three whole times. Phantom Dust was going to be a remake of the original Xbox game, and they just couldn't do it. You see, the developer of the remake was doing well with it. They asked Microsoft for more money, they said no, and cancelled it. 
forcing the developer to shut down and lay off all their employees. That could have gone better. I mean, technically, Phantom Dust did come out on the Xbox One, but they just remastered the original instead of remaking it from the ground up. At least they made this one for free as a nice little way to say, hey, it ain't game much better than this. Fable Legends was always a game I could count on never coming out. Each time I'd check on its development, it'd be like, it's coming, it's coming, whoops. Again, this led to the closure of the development team, Lionhead Studios. Now, thankfully, with Scalebound, this game's cancellation didn't shutter its developers' doors, but it almost did. Scalebound was a game Platinum's wanted to make for years, and Microsoft finally gave them the opportunity to crush their dreams. Actually, both parties weren't too sure of the title as development progressed, and they were worried about meeting fan expectations, and they felt they bit off more than they could chew. Microsoft announced the game was done for by saying, Scalebound is cancelled, please buy Halo Wars 2. But nothing will ever top the amount of 3DS games cancelled, I would have taken a bullet for DJ Hero 3D. At the 3DS's announcement during E3 2010, tons of third party games were revealed via logos, stuff like Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy and Saints Row Drive-By, but they were cancelled pretty much within the year they were announced, with barely any screenshots or footage to their names. Some speculate it was because 3DS sales were pretty slow near its launch, others assume it was because of 3DS hardware limitations or the audience of the platform from just not fitting these games. Lost Legacy became Assassin's Creed Revelations, and Saints Row Drive-By became not Assassin's Creed Revelations, that's for sure. I mean, I probably wouldn't have bought these games if they did come out. It's cool if they would have, but these just aren't the kind of games I wanted to play on the 3DS. Imagine that. All these games, and I was still just gonna buy the 3DS for Pilot Wings Resort. Ubisoft probably asked themselves, what the hell are we doing here, and pulled the plug. DJ Hero 3D was going to be the most immersive DJ Hero yet. Literally, it was gonna be DJ Hero on the 3DS. What a world we would have lived in. The demo was playable at E3 2010, but in early 2011, Activision canceled the entire Guitar Hero franchise and its spin-offs. No more games were in development due to declining sales, which meant DJ Hero 3D, it, it wasn't gonna make it. Bomberman for 3DS. It was announced, the developer Hudson Soft got absorbed into Konami, it didn't come out. Kaio King of Pirates was some penguin game that was made by Keiji Inafune, who worked on the Mega Man series before he left Capcom. It was revealed in 2011 and was cancelled a good four years later. Apparently it would have played like a Warriors game, but the reveal trailer was all we really got. And I don't know why, but this penguin is lodged in the back of my brain and something that might pop in my head if I think of the 3DS randomly. On the topic of Keiji Inafune and Mega Man, let's shift over to Mega Man Legends 3. It was announced in September 2010, but barely. The game itself wasn't really announced, rather the prototype of the game was announced. They were going to put out the prototype on the 3DS's eShop when it launched in the summer of 2011 to gauge interest in the title and to receive feedback. That never happened and they just cancelled everything, the nerve of them. But hey, at least it wasn't Bioshock for the Vita, you want to know how much we got on this? Just that. That's it. That's all we got. It never came out. Man, imagine what it's like to be Bioshock Vita. The seventh generation of consoles, back when DJ Hero After Party was cancelled, they had no mercy. Heroes the video game, if this game came out, okay. If this game got cancelled, okay. I have absolutely no opinion either way. Prey 2, now that was a game that was seemingly cancelled for no reason. It was apparently due to business politics and the sort. It was announced in 2011 and looked pretty good, and then Bethesda said, nah, it looks like trash, and cancelled it in 2014. Before the cancellation, the original developer Human Head was taken off the project, and it moved over to Arcane, where they pretty much started from scratch before the project was ultimately scrapped. However, Arcane was able to develop their own take on Prey, and that released in 2017. Warrior's Lair would have been a PS3 and Vita game, with the main gimmick being switching between the two consoles to pick up where you last played. But who cares about that when Bunk Brink of Extinction and Clay Fighter Call of Putty were cancelled? This was the big retro revival era of downloadable games. I mean, were you really expecting them to not try to reboot Bunk and Clay Fighter? Bonk was another victim of the Hudson absorption and was cancelled because of it. And Clay Fighter? Yeah, I don't know, it just stopped existing. A first-person Avengers game with an emphasis on co-op by THQ. Now, when I think THQ, my mind immediately goes to games on par with WALL-E for PlayStation 2, but near the end of their tenure, THQ was trying to turn the company around from mostly cheap licensed kids games to some bigger, better titles, with the Avengers game being one of them. It honestly sounded fairly promising, but THQ was just refusing to make a profit during this time and ended up having to scrap the project due to a lack of funding. Time Splitters 4! This game just kept on getting the old yeah it's happening treatment whenever people asked about its status. Because we really never knew much about it. Some teasers here and there, some information like, oh yeah, it's gonna use this engine or gonna be on this platform, but nope. 
Project Hammer. Now, here's a title I can get behind. What the f*** is a theater rhythm? No thank you. I'll stick to Hammer Game. I mean, look at it. What else did you expect from that title? You swing a hammer around to whack things. It was originally for the Wii being developed by Nintendo Software Technology. They're a studio in North America who developed stuff like Wave Race, but after Project Hammer got cancelled, they've been banished to making just Mario vs. Donkey Kong games. A fate worse than death. This game was revealed at E3 2006, and that was it. No more information. This was all Nintendo wanted to show us. After its cancellation in 2009, and NST tried to make a new Wave Race game for the Wii, and that got shut down, but at least we saw the minis march again. Super Mario Spikers was supposed to be a new sports game in the same vein as Mario Strikers, an extreme take on soccer with Mario characters, but Spikers was to be an extreme take on volleyball and wrestling, Jesus Christ. It was done by Next Level, the same guys behind Strikers, and it was cancelled in 2007 due to being a bit too violent for Mario. A gritty, more mature reboot of Kid Icarus was being developed for the Wii by Factor 5. This thing wouldn't stop getting rumored about back in the Wii days, but yeah, it was a thing, and I am very glad that Kid Icarus Uprising got made instead. Look at this guy. Mega Man Universe was a famous example of the great Mega Man cancellations of the 2010s. We already talked about Legends 3, but that was barely even in development by the time it got cancelled. Mega Man Universe was going to be a downloadable Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network game that allowed players to create and share their own Mega Man stages. It was heavily based on Mega Man 2, but featured its own god-awful art style. It was pretty much done from what I could gather, but Capcom pulled the plug on it on March 31st, 2011. Great time then there was the cancelled Maverick Hunter, the first person Mega Man X reboot, just what everybody wanted. Metroid Dread was always one of the most mysterious games that never released. It was never formally unveiled, but it was never formally cancelled. It just sort of showed up as a rumor from Game Informer in 2005. Apparently, it was a 2D Metroid for the DS. Rumors flitter around for years, and even an Easter egg made it into Metroid Prime 3, stating, The Metroid Project Dread is nearing completion. Nintendo denied the rumor that they were working on a 2D Metroid, but the series producer eventually stated that the project did exist at one point, but was scrapped just like My Life Coach on the DS. Katamari, Geist, and Gauntlet games were all planned for the DS, but these were all cancelled, with Gauntlet being the farthest along. As in, it was completely finished and they cancelled it for some reason. It was actually going to be a very impressive game for the DS. Both screens would display 3D graphics at the same time, it had local and online play, and online voice chat. But hey now, the PSP had some cancelled games too, like Far Cry, Saints Row Undercover, Earthworm Jim, and a Resident Evil game announced at E3 2009. Technically, this one was never actually cancelled, just nothing's come of it, but mark my words, Resident Evil PSP will eventually come out, I swear. Uh, Rainbow Six Patriots, that was cancelled, but it became Siege, so it's fine. The sixth generation had way too many cancelled games to count, so we gotta pick the games to discuss wisely here, big comfy couch on Xbox. With Microsoft buying Rare, most of their projects in the works for the GameCube and Game Boy Advance either had to be reworked or cancelled, one of the most infamous being Donkey Kong Racing, a bit of a successor to Diddy Kong Racing. With Rare being a Microsoft company after the buyout, they couldn't develop for Nintendo home consoles anymore, so they tried to rework Donkey Kong Racing into Saberman Stampede. That didn't come out either, so move over Donkey Kong Racing, we got laid instead. Rare games couldn't catch a break this generation, especially Conker's Bad Fur Day 2 or Conker's Other Bad Day. A sequel to the original was planned, but ultimately got cancelled. Similar to another Conker game worked on for the Xbox, Conker Gittin' Medieval. Uh, this was more spin-off than sequel though, being a third-person shooter. There was Velvet Dark, a cancelled spin-off of Perfect Dark following Joanna Dark's sister, and then various Banjo-Kazooie games. Uh, one was planned for the GameCube, if this GameCube tech demo Rare put together is trustworthy enough, and others were planned after Microsoft bought Rare. Banjo X was going to be a remake of the original Banjo Kazooie that would change dramatically as time went on to surprise players. This kind of reminds me of Conquer Live and Reloaded, a remake of Conquer's Bad Fur Day that did change some things here and there, kind of poking fun at being a remake. There was also Banjo Kazooie, which focused on building your own vehicles, and that became not Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, that's for sure. X Girl was a girlfriend simulator planned for the Xbox. That would have been great. You would just have a virtual girlfriend. It's everything my mom wouldn't want. Fallout Extreme. This sounds interesting. I'll look it up on Wikipedia. Fallout Extreme was in development for several months in 2000, but was canceled. I blinked, what? A tactical game for the Xbox and PS2. It didn't get too far into development and was never officially announced. Now, Sonic Extreme was a pitch for a Sonic skateboarding game on the Xbox that went nowhere, but a Skate or Die reboot did go somewhere all right. You know Skate or Die on the NES, right? That thing that wasn't good? Well, Criterion, who made Burnout, worked on a reboot, and it actually looked pretty promising. And I have absolutely nothing backing this up, but it was being published by EA. It could have been linked to the eventual creation of Skate. 
Charlie Brown's All-Stars. If a baseball game featuring this Charlie Brown model seems like your thing, I have terrible news for you. Before Retro Studios worked on Metroid Prime, they had loads of other games in development for the GameCube, including NFL Retro Football, Thunder Rally, and Action Adventure, but the most well-known canceled retro game was Ravenblade, an epic RPG that was scrapped to make room for old Prime over here. Castlevania Resurrection was being developed for the Dreamcast and was going to be in the style of the Nintendo 64 Castlevanias. It was canceled because, remember, Dreamcast. But hey, at least over on the PS2 and Xbox, Konami was working on Contra Online. I wanted to talk about Miss Bagman Maze Madness 2, but I have nothing to say. The fifth generation of consoles. Lots of cancellations during this just due to being a big transitional period for developers. Going from 2D to 3D, lots of projects just ended up not working out. Sonic Extreme, not Sonic Extreme, Sonic Extreme is one of the most famous cancellations of this era. The Sega Saturn didn't have its own original Sonic platformer and Extreme was set to be the big Sonic title for the system. However, development was brutal, especially on the employees working on the game, with some getting incredibly sick. Sega had to delay and eventually cancel the game due to development just not progressing well in any way. But to help make the cancellation sting a little less, they put out a Saturn version of Sonic 3D Blast me. It was obvious Sega wanted to combat Mario 64 with their own 3D Sonic platformer on the Saturn, but Nintendo was already planning to strike back with a sequel to Mario 64, never mind. A big element of Super Mario 64 2 would have been multiplayer. Luigi would appear in the game after being absent from the first one alongside Yoshi being rideable. This would have appeared on the Nintendo 64 DD, the disk drive, an add-on only available in Japan. But because nobody owned a 64 DD and the sequel's development just wasn't really going anywhere, work on it was scrapped. But it's fair to say elements from the game were definitely used on future Mario titles. Nintendo was working on so many games for the 64 DD, and because the add-on flopped hard, these games either just released via a standard cartridge, were reworked into games on future platforms, or were just straight up cancelled. The Nintendo 64 had a lot of interesting cancellations overall. Tons of third parties pledged their support, but eventually dropped out, obviously because of the limitations of the 64's cartridges. Contra Spirits, Ghosts and Goblins 64, Doom Absolution. There's not much that exists in the form of concrete images or videos of any of these, but they were being worked on at one point, which is about all there is to say. Quest 64 would have gotten a sequel if all hell broke loose, and Glover 2 was only cancelled because while the game was a big enough success to warrant a sequel, the publisher bought way too many cartridges of Glover 1, so they had like 150,000 of them laying around unsold. They didn't want to deal with more Glover. A Nintendo 64 version of Advance Wars and Fire Emblem were being worked on, but were either eventually scrapped in the case of 64 Wars, or reworked into a new game with Fire Emblem. But outside of the 64, there's Thrill Kill, a PS1 release that didn't. It was apparently so controversial, they just didn't want to deal with releasing it. It ended up getting leaked online and got passed around like crazy, and look at that, we're not all murderers with Thrill Kill out in the open, we're fine. A few Game Boy Color games never made it to market. South Park was originally going to appear, but was cancelled due to these two things just not making sense demographic-wise. Moving on to the fourth generation, and things are definitely slowing down. Not as many massive cancellations. The Star Fox 2 would have been an obvious game to talk about, but Nintendo decided to finally release it in 2017 via the SNES Classic Edition. Who cares about it? But we might as well cover it. Obviously, the sequel to Star Fox, and it was cancelled simply because it was releasing in the latter half of the SNES's life. It would have looked puny and weak compared to the 3D consoles at the time, Time, and the Nintendo 64 was coming out with a Star Fox game of its own in development. <laughs> Whatever, this game wasn't cancelled, we're talking Kid Kirby today. Supposedly, it was going to use the SNES mouse and feature Kirby in his prime, an origin story. It was going to be developed by DMA Design. That's Rockstar Games, they worked on a Kirby game at one point. Dream was the basis for what would become Banjo-Kazooie, but the original game developed by Rare for the SNES and then the Nintendo 64, yeah, that was not this. An RPG in the style of the original Donkey Kong Country. This is pretty crazy as a Super Nintendo game looks-wise. It's a shame the original version of the game never saw the light of day. Now, I gotta talk about the Virtual Boy cancellations. Come on, Donkey Kong Country 2 was gonna be on this thing. That would've been terrible. GoldenEye 007 as a racing game. All right, sure. VB Mario Land. It apparently would've played very similarly to standard Mario platformers, but it would've had wackier camera angles with an overhead shot being used once and Mario walking between the foreground and background. It would've been cool, but oh my god, this is slow. And finally, let's end things off with the third generation of consoles. We could go over the second and first generation, but what am I gonna talk about? Oh no, Dukes of Hazard didn't come out on Atari, no! Earthbound, or Mother 1, or Earthbound Beginnings. The first Earthbound was intended to come out in North America, but never did, probably due to the cost of releasing an RPG on the NES near the release of the SNES, just wasn't worth it. 
Nintendo of America sat on a full English translation of the game for years until it finally released as Earthbound Beginnings on the Wii U Virtual Console. Donkey Kong's Fun with Music! This was a music educational title that taught everybody how fun music can be with Donkey Kong involved. It's actually pretty cool because Pauline is seen here as a vocalist, which she was in Mario Odyssey. Return of Donkey Kong was a game listed as a release in a few official Nintendo publications. It never surfaced, and we don't know what a game called Return of Donkey Kong would have looked like. If I had to guess, I'd say this might have been a temporary title for Donkey Kong Classics, which was a compilation of Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. I don't know. SimCity was fully created for the NES, but just never released. Same goes for the California Raisins game and Sunman. Sunsoft was gonna make a Superman game, they lost the license, they went through the trouble to rename the game Sunman to just end up not releasing it, aw. But none of these will ever compare. Street Fighter on the NES. Yes. So those were just a few cancelled games throughout history, but far from all of them. Who knows, like I said, maybe we can return to this topic eventually, or even take a look at specific cancelled games themselves. But as of right now, I'm a little more concerned with maintaining my privacy. How does it look on me? Uh, if guys DS can leak, who says my blood type and hair color can't? You know, I might want to go a step further. Maybe a little more. Just a little more.